While the Ravens have soared high since that team could not have gotten off to a better start. For You'll be on this journey with me. Hey guys, now joined inside Nats Park. So former Ravens linebacker Patrick Queen went into full-blown hypocrite mode over the weekend on social media, and I wanted to give you my thoughts on what I watched transpire. So that and more is what I have coming up in this episode, which is brought to you by my friends at Primary Residential Mortgage. And with that, welcome into the channel. I'm Bobby Trossett, and as always, this is where I bring you Baltimore sports and beyond. A quick note before we dive in from my friends at PRMI who are skilled in the Photoshopping side of things, as you can see on the screen, but they want to know, are you feeling overwhelmed thinking about the home buying process? Sometimes buying a house can feel like a marathon, but at PRMI, loan experts bring the finish line to you. And here's what they provide. Accessibility. They've got 24 branches where you can experience a local feel, yet there's a national footprint that's attached. They served just under 2,000 families in 2023. The reputation, customer satisfaction through the roof. 495 average, four, uh, excuse me, a 4.95 average five-star review score. You've got loan options. And with processing and underwriting happening in-house and locally, PRMI is able to provide smooth settlement from start to finish. So whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance an existing property, the professional team at PRMI is here to help. And right now there's an exclusive incentive available to you as a Bobby Baltimore subscriber. Until July 1st of 2024, they are covering the cost of your appraisal up to $550. You can redeem that by applying through the PRMI Mid-Atlantic website. Just mention my name. So reach out to PRMI today if you're interested. They can help you make your dream of owning a home a reality. PRMI is an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 3094. You can get started today by visiting the show notes below where I have a link and all that information is in the show notes. Let's get to what Patrick Queen had to say on Twitter over the weekend. But first, a little bit of context. During his Friday press conference, his introductory press conference as the newest member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, he said this. It's going to be weird, but I mean, you know, um, I want to be that villain. I want to be that guy. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking to do some stuff to them. All right, here's the deal. I'm all for embracing the role of the villain. Matter of fact, it's the road less traveled. It's courageous. It's not easy. It can be challenging. But at the same time, when you embrace the role as a villain, you have to fully embrace it. You cannot allow yourself to be bothered. You cannot allow yourself to be affected verbally, physically, you name it, spiritually, mentally. And over the weekend, I think PQ acted a little bit hypocritical with this tweet, clearly allowing some of the Ravens flock fan base to get under his skin. He tweeted out the following, honestly, bro, y'all can shut the F up right now. It's not even that deep for us players until game week, and y'all can't understand the fact that it wasn't up to me. I gave y'all everything I had now. When it's time for me to do what I need, y'all hurt about everything I say. Go touch some grass and fill the void in y'all life. To one still showing love, even with the switch, this is not to y'all. So, again, obviously PQ feeling the heat here, having joined the bitter rival Pittsburgh Steelers in division. He will see the Ravens at least twice a year moving forward, and he's going to have to deal with the likes of Derrick Henry, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Lamar if he gets through the first level into the second, which he you knows he's done a lot of work, a lot, a lot of damage in over the years, and that's not to mention the other playmaking abilities that they have inside and outside in that backfield uh, and in that wide receiver room. So, uh, look <sighs> – Patrick's killing me, man, because I really am a fan of Patrick. I'm really a fan of the way in which he allowed his play to do the talking throughout this past season. Things obviously didn't go his way over the last couple of years, not only when it comes to the development side of things prior to, I'd say, the 2022 season. There were definitely some questions about his development. There were definitely some questions about what he needed around him, whether that be Josh Bynes. Or help. And then obviously, when Roquan came to town, he was essentially demoted or, for better football terms, asked to do the weak side linebacker role. And so, 
while at the same time, a year and a half later, he's an all-pro player, just got paid by the Pittsburgh Steelers, put on an incredible year, matured, said and did all the right things. Now you're kind of seeing like almost a step back. He took so many steps forward. And I'm not saying he's taking a step back in play. I still think he's going to be maybe not the same, but a very similar Patrick Queen to the one that we've seen here the last two seasons in Baltimore. But to act like this and to allow a certain percentage, and by the way, I think it's a small percentage. It's always the vocal minority when it comes to social media, in my opinion. I think he's making it pretty clear that he's reading every single mention that comes in about him. And it got under his skin which resulted in a tweet like this. Here he is prior to this tweet talking about some of the blowback. Uh, a little bit, you know, uh, for the most part, it's really just the fans, honestly, which, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less. Uh, but as far as players, I mean, it's all been good. Joking vibes. Uh, everybody's happy for me. Everybody's excited for the rivalry. Uh, so, you know, being able to go across the field and stare each other down and play against each other, it's going to be fun. Um, like I said, it's just really the fans. Everybody that I talked to, coaches, organization, uh, they are, they were all happy for me. As am I, and I'm sure a lot of you are happy for Patrick. I'm sure you can put your fandom aside and look at it from you know, a no-biased position and be like, yeah, this dude got paid. Not sure if it was the best offer out there. Perhaps it was. Carolina, Houston, some other teams may have been interested in Patrick's services, but ultimately – he goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they just got an upgrade, no doubt, in the middle part of their defense. At the same time, what good does this do anybody, this tweet right here? All it is is an emotional reaction. And look, I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and, uh, you know, <laughs> what's the right word? Like, lecture Patrick. I'm the last person that should be doing that. I can react emotionally. Yeah, I, I've been known to react emotionally. But at the same time, I can also look at this with no dog in the fight from a level-headed approach and be like, dude, there's, there's just no need for this, man. Like, move forward. You know, you feel good about your decision. Your teammates, in your eyes, say they feel good about the decision or they're proud of you, they're happy for you. Zach Orr tweeted about it. Like, why is there any need to do this, to give more of a voice to those who really don't have a big voice to begin with? To me, the vocal minority can so often get into the heads of public figures and almost give you this false perception, this, um, oh gosh, what is the right word that I'm looking for? This morphed almost perception, right, of reality. Reality is that the overwhelming majority of this fan base understood the business behind the Ravens' decision to let Patrick walk right, to decline his fifth-year option a year ago, to draft his future replacement in Trenton Simpson back in April. Like, everybody understood that. Those who follow football, those who understand the business side of the game, they understand that. That vocal minority that's probably below 1% of this fan base, just because they're vocal, just because they're boisterous, just because they're loud, doesn't mean they're representative of an entire group. And I hope PQ is reminded of that. Here's more from his press conference on Friday. I saw you on social media, clap back at somebody, a radio person, Baltimore. Is that something to you personal that you could, without Rokon, you can be the yeah. guy? Is that something yeah. you want to show? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that whole little situation is, you know, he definitely helped. Like, you know, uh, definitely learned a lot from him. But at the same time, I got to go on a I don't know that field. I got to perform. I got to play. I got to tackle. I got to do these things. I got to catch the ball. So, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, he made me, uh, I think I was already on, on my path that I'm on right now. Uh, you know, it just took a little time, and I started hitting that stride the third year, the beginning of the third year. And once he got here, it just even helped me even more. So um, now it's my time to go out there and lead and bring somebody else up. All right. So, hey, some questions about whether or not PQ can be the guy without Roquan around. Look, there's no doubt that the emergence of Roquan, the arrival, the in-season arrival of Roquan, put Patrick's development, put his ultimate rise through the roof, right? And it, and it heightened and sped up that process. Um, to say that 
Patrick wouldn't be where he is without Roquan, I think is unfair. I think is a little unjustified. And ultimately, that's that's a disservice to PQ and, and what he he was turning into prior to Roquan's arrival. Um, you know, we can say all we want about what it might have looked like without Roquan, but there's that's really neither here nor there. And I thought this was kind of a funny exchange on social media as well. Uh, Kevin Ostriker transcribed the PQ quote in uh, one of his introductory Instagram videos on the Steelers account online. And he said, man, I'm so excited to be here. Can't wait to wear the black and gold. And Roquan reposted that video on his Instagram story and said, stop lying. So PQ quote tweets Kevin and says, he says one more thing and I'm posting his text messages. <laughs> I can only imagine what Rose has been up to. But yeah, look, this time was coming. All of, all of Baltimore understood this. These two couldn't play together forever. Uh, and ultimately, you're not going to pay two inside linebackers, you know, top of the money, top of the market kind of money. You're going to go in and play the system. You're going to go in and grab a dog like they did with Trenton Simpson and hopefully and really hope and pray that he develops quicker than PQ did. And it can be plug and play. He may not be as quick and as lightning speed quick, uh, especially between the tackles uh, and developed as PQ is in year two after really sitting aside from special teams and that Steelers game in the regular season finale, he may not be able to uh, uh, quickly kind of transition to NFL football, but at least, at least he'll have the savant. At least he'll have one of the greatest to do it in today's game alongside him in Roquan Smith. So I'd have to think that, that Trenton is going to be better for it. Uh, before we get to some news coming up about the NFL draft next month, man, the Rams are becoming the Ravens' western hub. <laughs> Look at this. Did I say the Rams? I meant the Chargers. The L.A. Chargers. Former Panthers starting center. Former Ravens offensive lineman, including some starting center work. Bradley Bozeman is signing a one-year deal with the L.A. Chargers. We know he's a veteran starter and a leader, both on and off the field. Shout out to his lovely wife, Nikki. Love this couple. Excited for Bradley's career to continue. It's been a disappointing couple seasons, I would think, for him. In Carolina, but as Ian Rappaport of NFL Network tweeted, yeah, it should make a huge impact in the new regime. And speaking of new, man, the Rams are just putting together a team that has so many ties to Baltimore. Obviously, some of that has to do with Jim Harbaugh being at the helm, but now Bradley Bozeman, Greg Roman, Gus Edwards, Hayden Hurst, and more will all reunite together as teammates. So it's quite the quite the group that's forming out in L.A., and I cannot wait. I hope it's a primetime game where we get to watch another Harbaugh Bowl between Jim and John coming up in the 2024 season. So Bradley Bozeman gets signed to the Chargers. Still a lot of names out there remaining and available on the market, including Odell Beckham Jr., who penned a goodbye to the Ravens on Sunday night. Wouldn't be surprised if he ends up with the New York Jets, honestly, especially because of a lot of the reports from a season ago when really the Ravens overpaying him just forced him to, or not forced him, but basically said, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna go cancel my visit with the Jets. I'm going to Baltimore. I'd be curious to see if a year later, if he tries the Jets, goes back to that big market feel and ends up playing with Aaron Rodgers before his career is done. That'd be entertaining. Certainly would be entertaining. And now the Ravens move forward. They retool in the draft, perhaps bring in a veteran wide receiver if they don't want to go through the draft. But I, you know, I for one hope it's a big body and hope it comes on day two of the NFL draft. And speaking of the draft, Sarah and I are thrilled to tell you about our first ever, our inaugural in person marathon live stream draft party. It's Thursday, April 25th at Soundstage in downtown Baltimore. We're going to kick things off at seven o'clock. Premium tailgate buffet is catered by our friends at Clean Cuisine. Jerry and Aaron and Patrick and the group over there up in Owings Mills do such incredible work. Uh, and I cannot wait for you to, to, to taste what they do best. And that is crab cakes. That is every possible meal prep idea you can come up with. They've got it. They're right there, right past Stevenson University. And I'm excited to have them out for this special event. So 40 bucks gets you in. You get access to the premium tailgate buffet. You've got a cash bar, 
We're going to have some special guests dropping through. More announcements on that still to come. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have memorabilia. And it should just be a great time leading up to the 30th overall pick in the opening round of the 2024 NFL Draft. Sarah is going to be flying in for Columbus for this event. I am just super, super fired up for the opportunity. I want to thank Soundstage. I want to thank Clean Cuisine. I want to thank Sarah. And I want to thank our sponsors for being open to this uh, idea. So anyway, before we sign off, we've got some new news coming in here from Ian Rappaport. The New Orleans Saints are expected to sign Chase Young. So the former number two overall pick back in 2020 is going to get a fresh start. He was, remember, he was brought into San Francisco this past season after beginning his career in Washington. And now Chase Young, one of the game's premier young pass rushers, is heading to New Orleans to join the Saints. So that's another pass rusher off the board. I sure hope the Ravens are going to be have a chance to bring in, bring back, I should say, not bring in, but bring back Jadavian Clowney. Because while he's doing his tour visits, I think he's going to visit the Jets this week. He looked at a couple teams last week, including Carolina. I think what he showed you last year is that he doesn't only have a, left, a lot left in the tank, but he can really stabilize and fortify a pass rusher room, especially when you have a young one like the Ravens do right now with Adafi Owe and David Ajabo. So let's see how things play out here as free agency continues. It's sort of that third wave, if you will, of free agency. And, of course, we're going to begin to kind of turn the page here as we get ready for the NFL draft coming up next month. So anyway, I appreciate you guys for dropping by the channel. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing, liking this video if you enjoyed this specific piece of content, and going to check out uh, The Vault in our audio-only spaces and right here on YouTube for more Daily Ravens content with my co-host, Sarah Ellison. And again, you can find information on tickets, tickets to our, our inaugural NFL Draft Marathon live stream party uh, in the show notes below. 40 bucks on Ticketmaster. Piece of cake. Hope to see you there.